In this project, we're going to take a look at using the Raspberry Pi for home automation. I'll be using Insteon, which is a popular automation technology that enables light switches, thermostats, appliances, and other devices to interoperate through dual bands of power line and RF. I have a fountain in the lobby at my office, and I've had to replace several pumps because people forget to add water, and they don't always turn it off at the end of the day. Therefore, my goal is to have the Pi turn the fountain on in the morning and off in the evening. The Pi will also monitor the water level, and if it gets too low, the fountain will be shut off and an email notification will be sent out. I'm using an Insteon PowerLink modem, also known as a PLM. It communicates with other Insteon modules via the electrical lines in your house and or 900 megahertz wireless. It's connected to the Pi's USB port. No GPIO will be necessary. The PLM allows the Pi to operate the fountain, which is plugged into an Insteon appliance module. I also have an Insteon IO-Link module. The I.O. stands for input-output. I'll use it to pull the fountain water level. It has an input that can monitor any high-low sensor and return the status to the PLM. When I short the sensor to ground, the module state changes as indicated by the green LED. Here's my water level sensor. It's a simple magnetic float switch mounted on a piece of copper bar to match my fountain. I have it connected to the sensor and ground pins of my I.O. link module. I'll perform a quick test. Since there's no water in the container, the green LED is on, indicating a low water level. If you watch the green LED carefully, you can see it go off as the water level rises in the container. And when I lift the sensor out of the water, the green LED comes back on. Here is the back of the base of my fountain. I'll drop the float switch into the fountain reservoir and secure it with the existing copper rods. Now I plug in the IO link module, which will get connected to the float switch. I'll also plug in the outdoor appliance module and then plug the fountain pump into the module. The outlet on the front of the IO link is a pass through, so it doesn't actually use up any electrical outlet, and it lets me plug both modules into one spot. I looked at several programming options to control the PLM. Mr. House is a Perl program that has been around for a long time. It works with Insteon, but it's pretty complicated and does way more than I need. Pytomation is a great Python program for automation, but again, it's a heavy, full on framework for automating your house. What I really wanted was a simple module to communicate with the PLM and nothing else. Fluent Dwelling has a great open source module that was one of the most reliable ones I tested. Unfortunately, it's in C-sharp and I really wanted to stay with Python. I ended up going with a Python module called PyLights by Byron Bridges. It's a lightweight open source module that works with Insteon and X10. It has all the features I need and more and um, I converted it to Python 3, fixed a few bugs, and made some additions. The revised version can be downloaded from my website, rototron.info. PyLights depends on the Pi Serial module, so to make sure I have it, I open up idle 3, and I'll try to import Serial. Since I get an error, I now know I need to install it, uh, the version specific to Python 3. The most reliable way I've found to do this is using pip. First, I'll install Python 3 setup tools, Next, I sudo easy install 3 pip. I sped up the install video so you don't have to wait. Um, now we can sudo pip3 install PySerial. Please note that later versions of Raspbian come with PySerial, in which case you can skip this part. Once the PySerial module is installed, I go back to idle 3 and I make sure the import serial command doesn't throw an error. Looks like all's good. I created a folder in my home directory called PyLights. In addition to my PyLights 3 module, there is a devices XML file. If I cat this file, you can see that it's a list of my Insteon modules. This configuration file allows you to reference the modules in code by a friendly short name instead of using the hexadecimal address. This makes it a lot easier to read and write. PyLights will also update this module to indicate the current levels. For appliance modules, zero is off, and 255 is on. 
Now I'll go back to the Python 3 shell. First I'll import OS and change the current directory to PyLights, so I don't have to worry about any paths. I'll import PyLights 3 and I'll specify the name of the device's configuration file that we just looked at. Now I'll instantiate a PLM. I modified PyLights so it can recognize the USB PLM in addition to the serial version. Everything looks good. The PLM was found on TTY USB 0 and we can now start issuing Instion commands. First I'll use the Python help command to get a summary of the PyLights 3 PLM class. You can add a responder. I haven't used this feature, but I guess it lets you monitor Instion keypads. The close command should be used when you're done with the PLM to release the serial port. There is a fade in and fade out to operate dimmable lamp modules. The get level method, in addition to returning the lamp dim levels, will let you know the state of an appliance module. I use it to determine if my fountain is turned on or off. I added the get sensor state method to allow me to pull my IO link module. Zero means the water level is okay. One indicates low water. I modified the scan serial ports method as mentioned earlier. So in addition to regular serial ports, it can now detect USB serial devices like my PLM. Send STD message is a very powerful method that lets you send raw Instion hex commands. Instion provides a developer's guide on their site that lists all the hex commands. Therefore, even if PyLights doesn't have a native method to control your specific module, you can always fall back to this method. You can also send X10 commands. X10 is a technology like Instion that's been around for around 40 years. Uh, it's not as reliable, but you can get the modules very cheap on eBay. The set level method allows you to set the dim levels of lamp modules, and more importantly for this project, you can also use it to control appliance modules. Level 0 turns off and 100 turns on. I use it for turning my fountain on and off. I'll use set level to turn the fountain on. I specify 100% because appliance modules can only be set to 0 off or 100 on. One of the key benefits of Instion is that the modules acknowledge when a command is successful. The OK confirms successful transmission. The fountain doesn't make the best example because it takes a while for the water to flow and to stop. But if you listen you can hear the sound of the pump start and stop. Now I'll use set level with a zero parameter to shut off the fountain. Again, OK confirms that the fountain is off and the pump motor has stopped. Now I'll issue get sensor state to pull the water level float sensor. Since there's plenty of water in the reservoir, the method returns a zero value. I place stacks of pennies to raise the level sensor and simulate a low water condition. Now when I issue get sensor state, the IO link returns one indicating low water. It's important to issue a close command when you're done using the PLM. Otherwise, the serial port will not be released, and this can cause problems. Here's the Python program I wrote to control the fountain. I'll start by importing the PyLights 3 module and specifying the device's configuration file. Then I'll use PyLights to instantiate my power link modem. I set up a flag to hold the state of the fountain pump, and I perform an initial check using get level to determine if the appliance module for the fountain is on when the program starts. I'll also set up a boolean for low water state and do an initial check using get sensor state to pull the IO link module to make sure the float switch is not indicating low water. I have a minute counter variable to help control timing. Here's the main program loop which runs every 5 seconds. First I check the date time to determine if it's business hours. The ISO weekday method lets the program know if it's between Monday and Friday. The hour property checks if it's between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Next I check if the fountain should be turned on. If the fountain is not running and it's business hours and the water reservoir is not too low, then the program will turn the fountain on. The set level method sends 100 to the outdoor module to turn the pump on. Then I check if the fountain should be turned off. If the fountain is running and it's not business hours or the water is too low, then the set level method sends 0 to the outdoor module to turn the pump off. Now I check the water levels every minute. I use the minute property to see if a minute has elapsed. If the fountain is in a low water state, then the program will check every minute during business hours to determine if it has been filled back up. There's no point in checking outside business hours because there's no one around to fill it. Again, get sensor state method pulls the IO link module. 
Finally, I have the program to check for a low water condition every five minutes. There's no need to pull the IO link module more frequently because evaporation is a slow process and there's no need to produce unnecessary Insteon traffic. I still need to write the code for the notification section, which will go here. It'll send out an email if the water is low in the fountain. Let the person know that they need to fill it up. Now, if you take a look at my second temperature monitoring video, I go into detail about logging and notification with the Pi. The destroy method gets fired when the program ends, and make sure that the PLM gets closed to release the serial port. I set up the loop to be similar to the WebIO Pi loop, because I will probably just drop this code into my temperature monitoring project, which will allow my rack Pi to monitor both my server room temperature and the lobby fountain. In conclusion, I should mention some pitfalls regarding Insteon. There are many alternatives. I selected Insteon for this project to familiarize myself with the technology. I have a substantial amount of X10 in my house, so I like the idea that Insteon is compatible. Bottom line is that it's far from perfect. Many things can interfere with the Insteon power line signals, power strips, UPS, computers, fluorescent lights, and other wireless devices. I'm currently running the fountain on my rack pie in my server room, which is full of servers, batteries, power strips, CFL lights, and surrounded by high power Wi-Fi access points and a wireless VOIP system. In short, pretty rough conditions. The good news is that it works most of the time, but there will be drop transmissions, timeouts, and corrupt replies. I was careful when I wrote the Python code to allow for these failures. All transmissions are checked, and if the first try fails, the program will keep trying. Another issue is that most US homes have two separate electrical faces, and the Insteon power line commands cannot communicate across them without some type of bridge. You can get a hardwired electrical coupler, or in my case, I got a wireless access point module. My office actually uses three-phase electrical, which is even worse. Dual band can help with reliability. By sending signals on both power line and wireless, you increase the odds for success. Not all Insteon products are dual band. Some are only power line or only wireless. It's always advantageous to try and buy dual band devices like my outdoor appliance module and my PLM. There was a design flaw that I didn't catch until I was up and running, and I received complaints about multiple notifications. Turns out the water level in the base of the fountain rises by about half an inch after the pump stops, because all the running water eventually drains down. When the water is low, the float sensor shuts off the pump. The water would drain down and raise the float, which would start the pump, and the program would get stuck in an infinite loop. So to solve the problem, I swapped out the single float sensor for a dual. I used the bottom sensor for detecting low water, and I used the top sensor for detecting a refill. Unfortunately, the IO link module only supports one input sensor, and now I have two. There are multiple sensor modules, but they are very expensive. Fortunately, I came up with an inexpensive, simple solution. The IO link module also has an output relay. My original wiring simply connected the sensor pin of the module through the float switch to ground. I rewired the module so that the relay can now switch the sensor between the upper and the lower float. Under normal operations, the lower float will be active. Then when low water is detected, I switch the relay to the upper float. Now even if the draining water raises the lower float, the program will wait until the upper float is raised before restarting. Only two lines of code are required to handle the relay, which is controlled the same as an appliance module with the set level command. I considered switching to a better sensor like this E-tape model, which actually returns the water level in inches. Unfortunately, the IO-Link only supports high-low sensors. Simple Home Net does make Insteon analog and digital sensors, but again, they're pretty expensive. I only used the IO-Link because there was no easy way for me to run a wire from my fountain to the Pi. The better way to do this project would be to lose the Insteon IO-Link and wire the proper sensor directly to the Pi's GPIO. If there's any interest, I could make another video showing how to integrate analog sensors in the Pi. It'd be cool to have a web IO Pi webpage that actually shows the fountain water level in inches. If you like these videos, please subscribe and check out my website, rototron.info, for more detailed information on this project. Thanks.